And yes, let's incentivize people to go take on the toughest challenges. It's very difficult to teach highly motivated, very different to teach highly motivated kids who come to school with all the advantages than it is to teach kids who come from very challenged backgrounds, who are not often succeeding in school, who don't find their home life congenial and supportive in many ways. And we need to reward those people who take on those challenges. Now, same kind of issues have to be addressed with the pension, not just how much goes in and how much goes out, but portability in pensions matters. So a lot of teachers from other districts, I recruit them all over, and they come to New York and they say to me, well, look, I got 17 years in Montgomery County. And I say, don't tell Jerry that I'm trying to steal you away. But they got 17 years in Montgomery County. And they can't stay in my system 30 years to get the pension they need. So that's a real deterrent. Or take the current hard economic times we're in. And this is a real issue. Again, it may make people uncomfortable, but it's a real issue. In the current economic times, school districts are finding they have to lay off people. Now, if in fact your system is tied to a locked-in pension after 30 years, it's very hard to do buyouts and other things because somebody says, well, why would I take a buyout when I can stay in the system another five years or seven years and get my full pension? And for those who are already past their pensionable period, while some remain, many say to themselves, I can now get 70, 75 percent of my income through my pension. And then I can take a second job or work part time and actually make a lot more money now. And we in the school system can't keep them, even if we want to, in the system. So to me, these are core issues. And it's timely because, thank goodness, the President of the United States is talking about the very same issues. Secretary Duncan, who learned a lot about these issues, toiling in the vineyards in Chicago for over eight years as their superintendent, or they call him CEO there. And they're putting on the table this issue of teacher excellence and teacher effectiveness. And that's what I think this report puts front and center. In the end, it's gonna be part of what I believe, and this is gonna be a challenge for all of us, a transformation of the teaching profession. You know, we grew up in an environment in which most of us, in which women and minorities, as Steve said, didn't have the same choices. So there was this massive human resource subsidy that came into public education, right? Great teachers who in today's world might be lawyers, doctors, business people, what have you. Many of them became teachers. That world has passed us. And as a result, we need to think very seriously about effectively recruiting teachers. McKinsey put out a report, a global report, looked at those school systems throughout the world that are succeeding. And you know what they found the magic difference was? Systems that are doing really well globally recruit their teachers from the top third of their college graduating reports, uh, college graduates. You know where America principally recruits her teachers from? From the bottom third of our college graduates. And we need to create a culture that makes teaching a great and highly desired job. We need to create a culture where you never end again hear someone say a teacher is a teacher is a teacher and the only distinction is length of service or whether they got another 30 credits. And we need to create a culture where young people feel just like they do in the law or in any other field, that excellence truly matters. Because if you reward longevity, you get longevity. If you reward excellence, you're gonna get excellence. And our kids, indeed the future of this country, depends upon attracting, sustaining, rewarding, and developing excellence in our teaching core. If the only way a teacher feels he can make or she can make a livable wage is to move on to administration, then we've got something wrong with the system. On the other hand, if we don't play only around the edges, do small bore things, say a little bit of pay for performance, we're not gonna change the culture that needs to be changed. There's a couple articles by Al Shanker, the iconic leader of the AFT, in the 90s, talking about these very issues, talking about the professionalization of teaching. I think President Obama 
is willing to pick up those cudgels and see if we can move it forward. I know CED has moved that discussion forward by issuing this really thoughtful and provocative report. But I also believe if the people in this room, the companies represented in this room, the philanthropic organizations that are here, are not willing to put their shoulder to the wheel, and yes, get through the controversy, because there will be controversy, you can't do this noiselessly, then we're not going to get the outcomes we need for our kids. It may not, to most people, seem like a crisis today. But if you look at the numbers and you think about where so many kids in our society, in an increasingly global, competitive society, are ending up, you don't have to be the greatest forecaster of the future to be able to conclude what I hope I've persuaded you to conclude today, and that is we got to get about this with a real sense of urgency. And we have got to stop presuming that the status quo has to be the dominant way of thinking about the problems. America is known for solving the toughest problems. The education issue is right up there, as the President said, with health and energy. I think we can do it in education. If we do it in education, future generations will benefit both in terms of our competitiveness and in terms of all these other health and subsidiary issues. But again, it's going to take people whose own children are getting a great education to see that we are truly in this together. For focusing on these core issues, I salute CED and thank you for what I think is a major contribution to the discussion. Thank you very much. So because they give you such a huge honorarium at CED, they require, they require you to take 10 minutes of questions. That doesn't mean you have to ask them, but if you have them, I'd be more than happy to try to answer them, or if you have comments, I'd welcome them.